over here on the other side, you can see the storage here. So this is just dedicated to tools. Top shelf is all electron, electric drill stuff and that kind of thing, and then my tools. And then down on the bottom, I have a, a floor jack and everything that's big enough to pick this thing up. Um, and then over here, <clears throat> I should have cleaned this out so you could see how big it is. But you've got your water tank over here. Um, we just have our life jackets and stuff there. I have an extra set of um, hubs for the front and bearings for the rear in case I ever have to deal with that situation on the road. And then we keep like our tent and everything here. Um, currently this has some crap st stuck on top of it, but these are the two garbage cans that you, when you throw things away from inside, goes either to recycle or trash. And then it has one more very large cabinet here. I mean, it's got my golf clubs and stuff in there. And so that is mainly storage above. And then the propane, it'll hold two propane bottles on the bottom. Uh, that's what we use for heating and cooking and that kind of thing. And then there's a fire extinguisher that's readily available if you need to grab one near the driver's side. So that's basically the rundown on storage. I was just curious, so I measured it up. And this thing has 75 cubic feet of storage on the exterior. So that's a lot of stuff you can carry with you and not have in the way. So that's one reason an ambulance like this is a great way to go. I was, I really didn't want to cut into the exterior of the body on this because, I mean, if you can imagine, that is one huge solid piece of aluminum on the side of this. And so anything you do to it's permanent. Uh, two things I had to do, or didn't have to do, but chose to do is one is this window right there wanted more light inside, something that you could look out of while you were standing up, as well as a window above the sink. So I added that, and then these are the vents for the um, refrigerator. So I had to, to, to tap into that area too and cut some holes. So, Okay, now inside the truck. Um, if you buy one of these, the first thing you're going to notice is these seats do not go back. In fact, the passenger seat on this was pretty much forced to be only in the uh, fully forward position. So the ability to recline or put the seat back and get some leg room, it's going to get your attention right away. Now the existing uh, wall came straight down here. So you can see this seat goes a lot further back now than it used to. And it actually had a sliding door that went across here, which added another inch or two to it. And uh, that's why the passenger seat couldn't go back very far because when you slide that door open, the seat had to go a couple inches further forward. So it was clear out here and you had no leg room. I knew that wasn't gonna work with my wife or myself in the driver's seat. So um, what I did obviously is I, first of all, inspected what was behind this wall. This actually turned out to be just a big, large, empty spot. There was nothing back here. It was just a big waste of space. So I was able to cut around the edge here and um, just this wall was already here. I just pushed it back and to this point and then framed in around it and um, we wrapped it in this carpet just to keep it quiet in here. Um, and on the driver's side did the same thing. Now on the driver's side, this wall here on the other side is full of electronics. It, um, it has pretty much everything from your sirens to there's a big um, solenoid in there if you run this master switch up front that turns on and off and controls everything in the back anyway um, I looked at this very heavily before I did this side and opted to go ahead and do it but um, I made sure that I was really careful not to damage any of the wiring or anything like that I put something between the blade and the wires to make sure I couldn't hurt it and that way I didn't have to bother with any of the rewiring and I was able to push the whole thing back without changing anything as far as electronics go. So um, as long as you don't take it too far, you can uh, you know, move this wall back if yours is the same as mine and end up with a uh, full extension of the seats and you're able to recline quite a bit, all, pretty much all, as much as I would ever need. And you also a a end up with uh, some extra storage space for up front here. Um, and in fact, down here behind the seat, there's a big storage box that we ended up with back there because, uh, like I said, that was just a big empty space. So that's what we did up front. Okay, now in the front, in the cab, um, 
I just wrapped this with the same material that um, you might be able to see it up close here. Let me touch that so it can focus. But anyway, it's just the same wood grain that we put on the interior in the back on the walls. Um, we added that. Uh, aside from that, the only thing we had to do was recharge the air conditioner. Um, it was just a little bit low when we got it, and it's worked for a whole year now. Uh, added this uh, deck with uh, the backup camera and everything on it, so we're able to use that to back up. And then the center console is just a stock center console. This is a little crude the way I did this, it's not finished yet, but I was able to take all the switches off the control panel, eliminating the radio, and uh, move some of the indicator lights for like the cabinets, because when you have any outside cabinet open or a door open, there's a light, or there's two lights in here that flash, indicating whether it's a cabinet or door. And that uh, is still there, so I know everything's closed before we go on the road. And then we were able to move all the electronics in here. And we have a little spot down here for, like, a glove box. And... Okay, so from the driver's seat, um, there's the gauges down below here that I added. I thought about putting pillar gauges in, but I've driven many vehicles with them, and I, I'm not a fan. They're just kind of in your way when you're driving. Um, I don't need to look at them that frequently, so I put them down here below where they're out of sight and out of mind, and also out of uh, uh, sight when you're driving at night because the light from them can be a little bright. You know, I like to turn the lights down if you're driving in, in the evening so it doesn't blind you. Um, here you have the main power to run the uh, transfer case. So you have to flip that on, and then if, once you have that on, you can put it into four high by holding this up for like five seconds, um, or sorry, two high, and then you can move it down to four high or four low based on how long you hold this button down. It's pretty easy to figure out, and it works really well. Um, so that's how you run the transmission or the transfer case. Okay, starting from the entrance going into the back. What we have here is um, we added this wood floor. Uh, we used to have carpet here, but that wouldn't work obviously because you're in and out so much that it's starting to put a wear on it. Um, added diamond plate here. Um, this is where the toilet is. We haven't finished building that yet. Um, haven't made a conclusion exactly how we'd like to do it, but we added diamond plate there as well as the wood floor, like I said. The wood floor goes from here up in between the driver and passenger seat in the front. So that um, gives it kind of a flow through to the back. And then we added this diamond plate throughout the interior on the kick panels. So that covered up the gray that was there before. Um, what else? Let's see. Okay. The countertops are just bas basically just some... It's like butcher block material you can get at Lowe's um, or Home Depot. It's wrapped in the same paint protection film that we use to protect brand new cars, so it's like 8 mils thick. It was kind of just a test, but actually so far it's held up really well. Um, added this aluminum trim around the edge here to uh, protect it from getting bumps or dings or anything like that. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, that is the, how the cabinet or the the countertops were made. Um, let's see, we did on the on the cabinets, yeah. So if you look here, originally they were all the same color as this wall. Everything was this color here. And it just drove us crazy. We couldn't stand it. So we wrapped all of these cabinets in this uh, vinyl material. You can get it off eBay. I forget the name, but um, the link's in one of my other videos and wrapped all those so it gives it kind of a more homey warm fill let's see we added that window there above the sink oh yeah one other thing we added here this fridge so this is an older fridge it's a dometic just like the awning and actually just like the stove but it is um it was like a yellow mustard color on the outside and we wrapped it with that same film to make it match the cabinets um, these cabinets here are not finished yet. I added these door handles and initially when we got this these cabinets would open up and they would hang down when they opened up like at an angle here and you would hit your head on the corner of them. I relocated the hinges from the top to the side 
and they're spring loaded so they actually hold themselves shut really well and uh, also hold themselves open really well and they had sliding panels here similar to what you see here with holes and I removed those because we're not going to slide them and just put uh, plexiglass in there I'm waiting on some more of this film to wrap these the center sections here to make them all wood as well but all of these cabinets I changed them so they opened sideways like so it's much better and uh, I haven't hit my head on them since I did that. So the sink and stove combo, it's a Dometic again. It's just got your two burners on side, both sides there and uh, the uh, water. So that works really well. It's a nice small size stove and sink combination. And what I like about it is you have a counter when you're not using it. So it really doesn't hog up any space at all. And on the backsplash here, this is just a rubberized synthetic tile you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's or any place like that. And it wraps very well around corners like this with a little heat. So I would just, if you go with something like that, the key to anything like that is prep that surface really well, make sure it's clean and grease free, and it seems to adhere very, very well.